I can dive right in. All right, let's pray. Uh, God, thanks for this morning. Thanks for this chance that we have to uh, spend time with you and spend time with each other this morning. Lord, I just pray for um, each and every person uh, on the chat right now and who's following along, God, that you would just speak to us this morning. You would uh, give us your words for us for this day. I thank you that it's Friday and that we're heading into a weekend. Lord, I just pray uh, your blessing on on this weekend and all the things that we have going on and the things that we have planned. Uh, Lord, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. We love you. We need you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we've got on the screen here um, Phil's structure for how he studies. And so we just prayed, we're getting ready to read. Uh, while we read, we go through um, observe, interpret, apply. And if you click on any of those links, it'll take you to uh, kind of a breakdown of what that looks like. Um, and then we'll go through study together. Uh, we'll reflect a little bit together. Um, but the goal always with Daily Time with God is to help kind of set that rhythm with you mm -hmm. And then you'll you'll take it onward into your day um, and do more reflection and uh, journaling or something along those lines. Um, there's also a couple links here to uh, Right Now Media. So Tony Evans did a great series on one anothering. And so if you want a little bit more uh, about what that looks like, you can click on those. And then if you don't have an account to Right Now Media, that is actually a gift that Eastern Hills um, provides for you. So you can click on that first link there to get your own free account. So digging into kindness and compassion, Kendall, we're going to start in Ephesians. Uh, so looking at Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, um, will you read those and then we'll talk about them? Yeah. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. That's awesome. So we start here in verse 31, and we're looking at all of these things that really are the opposite mm. of the way that we should be living. Um, my note here says that bitterness and resentment are incompatible with Christian speech mm. and Christian character. And I, I think that that's not something we think about very often. Oftentimes, it's just like, I'm mad or I'm upset or this is just the way that I feel and I'm going to feel my feels. And we forget that while it's okay to feel your feels, the way that we treat other people still matters, even in our anger. For sure. Uh, and so then Paul counters that to in this letter that he's writing to the Ephesians. And Kendall, you pointed this out the other day from prison is where mm -hmm. he's writing this. Uh, be kind to one another tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And when you think about it, I mean, he's, he's giving instruction to the Ephesians. Other, am I pausing today? Sorry. Every once um, in other letters, in other places, we'll see Paul say, um, follow my lead, mm. follow Jesus as I follow Jesus. And so really what, what we can pull out from this here is that he's sitting in his prison cell and he's looking around at the at the guards that are holding him in prison. And he's saying, I'm not going to let bitterness, wrath, anger, all of these things infect my heart. Instead, I'm choosing to be kind to those who are imprisoning me. And you, Ephesian church, ought to do likewise. It's hmm. good. I just think, man, you know, we, we look at Paul and we're like, well, you just had it easy. I mean you had like this crazy experience with Jesus and then you just got to plant churches all over the world. And we, we have to remember that it wasn't without a cost and it wasn't without suffering. And so when we read these words, how do you think that helps us remember to, to show kindness and compassion to people around us? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think it's interesting that it says to be kind to one another and then like tender hearted, like there's this, there's this like follow up word that's used there, almost like that it's it's that empathy idea that we've been talking about throughout the week. Um, it's it's kindness, it's understanding mm -hmm. what other people are going through. It's 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 knowing and hearing and understanding their story and their circumstances, and being kind through that. And then the the and then it says forgiving one another, 
as God in Christ forgave you. So the reminder that we've been forgiven, but that we're supposed to forgive other people and be forgiven by other people. And really what, what an amazing form of kindness that is to be forgiving. You know, when someone has hurt us, when someone has wronged us, it's easy to be bitter. It's easy to be angry, all of those things, but kindness is forgiving. Um, so I, that just stuck out to me the, the, the relationship between those two things specifically in this verse. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and we talk a lot about that the way that we interact with other people really should be coming from this overflow of what Jesus has done for us. Mm -hmm. And one of the main things that Jesus has done for us is forgiven us. Yeah. And so through that forgiveness, we should be able to be kind and tenderhearted and forgive others. Yeah, that's good. All right. All right. Uh, as always, if you have thoughts, questions, um, things that stick out to you, please drop that in the chat. Uh, but we're going to move on here to Colossians 3.12. Um, so it says here, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. So one of the things that jumped out to me immediately. And um, I wonder if Dom will chime in on this too, because he's mentioned it a couple of times, but if you jump up into verse 10, just right before this, uh, again, Paul is writing this and he says, and have, and having put on the new self, as opposed to this old self that he just uh, told us to take off. So mm. we've got this new self in Christ, this old self that was um, just living in our own weakness, our own flesh, uh, and then he says here, put on God as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about all that? Well, I, I, yeah, I love that the fact that this idea of our old self is behind us. This is our new self. And then each, it, it feels to me like a, re a reminder, you have to continue to put on these things. So, um, daily to think about how compassionate is my heart? How kind am I being? Humility, meekness, patience. We're going to see it. I have to sneeze. No, I'm good. We're going to see, a, we're <laughs> gonna see another, yeah, we're gonna see another list in, in the next passage in Galatians with the fruit of the spirit. We've talked about the Beatitudes. These, these lists that we keep seeing over and over are the ways that God asks us to interact with each other, with yeah. the, the ways that God asks us to interact with the people around us and kindness and humility repeated again from yesterday, the way we care for people there. It, they're always kind of linked into all of these lists together. And I think this is a reminder that it is, it is not something that just happens. Like the fruit of the spirit is in us, but we have to work it out of us. We have to continue to grow it in ourselves. We continue to put on each day these attributes. So I think it's, it's a good reminder that it's, it's something that we have to take a look at um, on a daily basis almost to, you know, imagine yourself in the mirror, like I'm putting on this, I'm becoming this, this is who I'm supposed to be. This is how I'm supposed to live. Yep. Yep. And we're actually going to, we'll be back in this passage next week mm. uh, when we're talking about bearing one another. And then we'll also be back in it in the following weeks. Cause after we're done with the one another study, we're going to be studying Colossians. So mm. uh, you can mark this one, everyone, because we're going to spend some time here. We're going to park uh, in Colossians for a couple weeks, but I was listening to my cousin actually, who works at a church in Minnesota and he had put something up on their church's uh, Facebook page yesterday. And it was actually this passage um, that we had read at his wedding. And one of the things, one of the comments was, every time I put compassion on, it's itchy. Mm. <laughs> right. It's good. So funny. Uh, my cousin's response was, maybe you have it inside out. Um, right. But it is that reminder. And, and we've talked before about... Um, when we, when we put things on, we're being very intentional about it. You don't accidentally put on your clothes in the morning. Um, it's very intentional what you're doing. And so we have to remember that this is an action. We have to be intentional about it. It's not just going to happen. If we're not doing it, it's not going to happen on its own. Right, right. Um, Jackie here, she says, I love Barry Corey's definition of kindness. He defines it as a firm center with soft edges. Mm. 
This is what Jesus demonstrates in the gospels. It's not being a pushover and it's always motivated by love. That's really good. good. Yeah. Like that. Um, then Janelle says, I think this describes exactly seeing others as image bearers for sure. Mm. And I think the reason that I've kind of dug in on that concept is because I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who is black and she was saying that oftentimes people don't see her and her family as image bearers just because of the color of their skin. Mm. And so when we are able to look beyond what we're seeing into Christ being reflected in someone, that really matters and it, and it affects the way that we treat people. Mm. Uh, Cassie says, I love that my Bible says he forgives us not because we forgive others, but solely because of his great mercy, mm. right? There's nothing we can do. There's nothing that we've done to deserve forgiveness. It's all because of Jesus. Yeah. So good. And then Peggy says, uh, her notes say that Paul offers a strategy to live for God, imit imitate Christ's compassionate, forgiving attitude. Let love guide your life. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Always be thankful. Keep God's word in you at all times. Live as Christ's representatives. That's good. Yeah. That's good. All right. So now we're going to jump down. We've already been in Galatians this week, but but because it's a list and because it's uh, relevant, we're going to hop back in there just for a hot minute. Uh, and we're going to see again those fruits of the spirit uh, starting in verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things. There is no law. Um, my note here says that kindness means showing goodness, generosity and sympathy toward others, which likewise is an attribute of God. Mm. Um, and we won't spend too much time here just because we have been here before. But Kendall, you already referenced it, but anything you wanted to add? Uh, in this list. Well, when you, st when you started, when you read that note there too, it, it reminds me of the difference between kindness and being nice, right? Mm -hmm. Those are, those are different things and kindness wraps up a little bit more. You can always be nice to people, but kindness almost takes e extra work going out of your way to, to be generous, to be, to be thoughtful, to be gentle, you know, all of those things. Um, and then I, I love this ver this phrase at the end of the fruits of the spirit against mm -hmm. such thing. There is no law like so many other places in scripture. You're given a list and it's like, these are the things you shouldn't do. And it was, it's almost like, you know, can you be too patient with someone? No, there's, there's no law against that. Like, can you be too kind to someone? No, there's no law against that. Like I, I, I love that phrase there at the end, like these things, don't ever, because I, I think we do, we worry that, oh, have I been too patient here? Right. Have I been too, you know, kind to this person? They don't deserve my kindness or whatever. It's like, no, no, no. There's no limit to, to these things. That's so good. And, and I think oftentimes we wonder if God's patience is going to run out, mm -hmm. if God's kindness is going to run out. And again, it's that reminder that no, it, right. his kindness is infinite. There is no beginning to it and there is no end. And no matter what we've done or what we do, his kindness is what will continue to lead us to repentance. For sure. It's good. All right. So we haven't done this in a while, but we're going to actually jump back into the Old Testament. We're going to look at two passages from the Old Testament from two different prophets. Um, prophets were used by God. They were chosen by God and they were used by God to talk directly to Israel in some capacity. And uh, Zechariah and Micah are the two prophets that we're going to look at. So God would be impressing um, what he wanted the, the prophets to communicate to the rest of Israel. Uh, and so we're going to look at that. So let's start in uh, Zechariah here. Um, we read that, Kendall. Yeah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the fatherless, the sojourner, or the poor, and let none of you devise evil against another in your heart. All right. So we've got God um, talking through the prophet to the people. 
And he starts by saying, render true judgments. So don't, uh, don't falsify what you know. Don't try to water down what is true, hold that in, in high esteem. But then we've got this show kindness and mercy to one another. Um, what do you think the point of that whole uh, conversation here is? Yeah, I think kind of why would he throw that in there? Right. Well, I think probably there's this idea of um, rendering true judgments. Like there, we we've talked about this throughout the week. Being accepting of other people, um, we don't we don't let people walk all over us. We don't, you know, if we've been hurt, if we've been, you know, taken advantage of, like we're gonna talk. Like I'm, I'm imagining like a court situation. There's going to be a true judgment against it, against this person, but we're going to show kindness at the same time. There's going to be forgiveness. Going back to that idea, there's going to be you know a, a re. Um, I just lost what kind of what word I'm going to say there. Like a, a redevelopment of that relationship or, or whatever's been broken. Like we're not going to pass over what what has been broken. We're going to render true judgments, but then we're going to show kindness and mercy to one another as well. So yeah, that's good. And then it, and then it goes on and it's like, Hey, these are the people that we're not being kind to mm. the, the weakest of our community. Um, oftentimes these are the people that were most oppressed because they had no status. Right. Uh, and so he, the, the prophet is being very specific here. God is being very specific here. And he's saying, um, I'm talking about the widow. I'm talking about the orphans. I'm talking about the one who is in your land, uh, who is not an Israelite. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the poor. Those people all still exist in our world today. Right. And so how are we interacting with them? Are we showing kindness and mercy to them? Or are we overlooking them mm -hmm. and kind of just moving along with our days? Yeah, um, it, goes, it goes back to the whole idea of acceptance and what we've been talking about all week you know, if you think you got this picture in your head of, of a, a widow or of an orphan and we go, Oh, how, how can I take care of those people? Like, how can I, you know, this, this, this person, um, they need our help. But then when you think about the sojourner or, you know, someone who's in your land for a permanent, for a temporary time, or, you know, I think some versions use alien, you know, as that, mm -hmm. or the poor, like, well, Oh, those, I don't want to help those people. Like they've brought this on themselves or they, you know, like those, those sort of things. So I think it is, it is another reminder that where God lists out a, a, a diverse group of people, diverse groups mm -hmm. of people and says, Hey, we have to love all of these people. We don't oppress these people. We continue to show love and care to them. Um, so I think that's, I think that's, it's always a reminder of like, there's going to be places where this is going to be very easy to be kind. And there's going to be places where this is going to be very difficult to be kind. We're called to be kind in all of those situations. Right. right. That's good. And when, and, I mean, I think, you know, they're using this word sojourner, but we've got refugees in Aurora. Mm -hmm. If you don't know that there's a huge refugee po population right here. Mm -hmm. um, how are we treating those folks? And, and what does right. that look like? And, are we being accepting of them? They're bringing different cultures with them. They're bringing different tr traditions with them. Um, how do we interact with those with those people that are different than us? And do we interact with them at all? I think that's even a question yeah. we need to be asking ourselves. Um, okay. So then we're jumping into Micah. Uh, Micah is 6.8. This is actually one of my favorite... Uh, versus I have it framed in a different room in our house. Um, but here it's very, very clear what God is saying, uh, what he's what he's telling us that we need to do. And uh, I'm going to read the version that we have here. It's the ESV version. And then I'm going to read the version that I actually like better. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you can pick and choose. Yeah. Um, but Micah 6, 8 says, he has told you, oh man, what is good. So God has told you. And what does the Lord require of you? Not does not what does he suggest or what does he offer as um, something that might be, you know, something to consider. Uh, but what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? And the, and the version that I uh, use says, uh, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. 
But what I love about this is it really just kind of wraps up all of the one another's that we've been talking about, um, that we're treating people equally and fairly, that we're loving them uh, with kindness or with mercy. And then we're walking humbly, uh, not just for people, but with God, because the way that we treat others is the way that we're treating God. Um, and so I just, I love how clear this is. And the reason that I have it framed is because these don't always come naturally mm. to most of us. Uh, doing justice requires a lot of work. Uh, mm. It requires you to step out of your comfort zone. It requires you to move beyond what you know and what you want to do sometimes. Um, loving, loving kindness and loving mercy, like that's difficult. Mm. It, it it stretches you. It, it makes you do and treat people in a way that is foreign to you. It, it makes you like we did yesterday, put people above yourself and, and hold them in higher esteem than you hold yourself. And then walking humbly, whether it's with others or with God, um, again, that requires you to become less and, and more of others in your life. So if you memorize one, one verse from scripture, like I think this is such a good one, but you gotta you gotta think about it and then practice right, it too. Right. Um, my note here says the Lord desires the primary forms of mm. love, and then it lists oh, those three: cool. do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly. Uh, anything well, I else? Did, I think the the idea of walking humbly with God. You know, to me, I read that and I go, well, yeah. If you if you're like if you took a walk with God, you would come into that with a place of humility, mm. right? Like you're God. I'm just this lowly person. But I think sometimes when we approach God in prayer or with our problems, or even just like when we're upset and mad, we don't come very humbly, right? We come with like, God, why are you doing it? Like right. you would never approach it. You would never approach God kind of in person or, you know, knowing his position as God of the universe and be like, why are you doing this? Like, you just don't question that. Like, right. he's God, you know, he right. does whatever he wants. Because, uh, but I think that, so it's a, it's a good reminder to us, like, we come before God in those, in those um, times with humility, but it's, that's good. Yeah. 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 Um, Sarah's already started to answer the questions that are going to be right after this passage in Mark. And I'll just kind of pull them up here so you guys can see them too. Uh, but we've got five questions that we've been answering every single day. So uh, what are the differences between how our culture defines kindness and compassion for one another and what we have read today? What do these verses give us and how God expects us to show kindness and compassion to one another? What prevents us from being kind and compassionate to one another? What sacrifices can you make to be more kind and compassionate to one another? And then when we fail to show kindness and compassion to others, what does it reveal about our own relationship with God? So as we're uh, finishing up with this passage in Mark, go ahead and start dropping in your thoughts there. And you can see Sarah's used numbers next to him. Uh, it just helps us as we're plugging things in and then we'll go back and uh, answer those questions together. So Kendall, we're going to end up in uh, a story that I think a lot of people are probably familiar with. Um, we talk about how Jesus feeds the 5,000 a lot. It's it's a story of, uh, we call it fishes and loaves, where mm -hmm. um, Jesus is able to multiply uh, abundantly to feed over 5,000 people. Um, mm -hmm. The thought is, is that there were 5,000 men about. And then mm. on top of that, there were women and children also. So, I mean, potentially tens of thousands of people. Right. Um, but we're going to kind of pull out, we're going to really be looking at it through this lens of kindness and compassion. Mm. Uh, so right before this, Jesus had sent his 12 apostles or his 12 disciples out to do ministry, to kind of spread ministry beyond where just Jesus could go on his own and he sent him out two by two and now they're coming back and they're super, super excited about everything that has happened. They've done some amazing things um, through God's power and they're, they're excited to tell them all about it, but they're also very, very tired and Jesus is tired too. And so we, we jump in here in verse 30 and it says the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest 
a while for many were coming and going. So there was these crowds constantly surrounding uh, Jesus and his disciples and they had no leisure even to eat. So they're, they're tired. Uh, they're hungry. I'm sure they were just physically and emotionally and spiritually exhausted. And then it says in verse 33, now many saw them going and recognized them. And they ran there on foot from the towns and got there ahead of them. So they knew where they were going. So they're like, we're going to, we're going to beat them there so that we're there when they get there. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And this is something, this is a theme that we've seen from the old Testament all the way through the new Testament. Uh, sheep are historically known as not being super smart. Uh, and if they don't have someone leading them, they, they end up in a, in a pretty bad situation. And so they need this shepherd to guide them and to care for them and to provide for them. And so this is what Jesus is seeing when he sees the crowd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place. So they're, we're seeing that word again. And the hour is now late. Send them away. Send all of these people away into the surrounding countryside and villages to buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? It's almost like this. Are you kidding me? Like, we're not ever going to be able to feed this many people. And interesting thing is they didn't travel with money. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then Jesus says, or, um, and then, yeah, he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. So they scan the crowd. Uh, and when they had found out, they said, we've got five loaves and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit in groups on the grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties and taking the loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and he said a blessing and broke the loaves and he gave it to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two small fish among them all and they all ate and were satisfied. Hmm. Sorry, I didn't, didn't keep track here. <clears throat> okay. So as we're thinking about kindness and compassion, what do we notice here from the way that Jesus is interacting mostly with his disciples, but also with the crowd? Hmm. Um, so many things like this is, this is one of my favorite passages in scripture because there's like, for me, there's just so many takeaways. Um, I think it's in John where we hear the, where we get the story of the, the little boy who gave his lunch, mm -hmm. you know, the, the kindness of Jesus, the kindness of the boy that gave his lunch, um, all of those things. Um, even the kindness of Jesus to his disciples to take them away to rest. Um, it, there's, there's so many, so many things to this, a few of the things that I, I'm, I'm sure you, you're thinking of a different direction here, Lisa, and you can say all those things in one second. But uh, <laughs> like, I, I just love that when Jesus says to them, you give them something to eat. Mm -hmm. And here again, like we've talked about all week with accepting other people, with, with loving and showing kindness and humility and care to other people, um, Jesus could have done this on his own. But he says, no, you give them something to eat. We're always part of God's plan to, to reach the world, to, to show care to the people That's around good. us. I love that part. Um, the other piece that I, that I love, and we kind of talked about this, I think on Tuesday, um, this little boy brings, you know, little boy, we have no idea how old he was or anything else, but I, I, I envision his mom making him a lunch, five loaves and two fish. And, he says, well, I've got five loaves and two fish. And I'm sure that like the disciples are like, sit down. You're an idiot. That's not going to feed people. And, and we were, you know, I think we on top Tuesday, we were talking about well, how do we, how, when, when stuff seems overwhelming, what can we do? Well, we might only be able to do one thing. This little boy, did he have enough to feed everyone? No, he had five loaves and two fish. He gave it to Jesus. And then it was enough to feed everyone. Sometimes what we have can become enough yeah. to feed everyone even in the hands of god because he's using us as part of that and then and then the last thing is so, someone pointed out to me it was gary haugen preached a message on this he's from international justice Mis mission he said what if the boy just sat and ate his lunch mm. like he would have been he would have had enough to eat 
that hmm. no one around him would have had enough to eat. And so like the boy actually wasn't selfish. He looked to other people, wanted to show kindness to the people around him, not knowing how it would make a difference, but he was willing to do that. And then when he got to go home that night to his mom and say, mom, guess what happened? Like, this is the craziest thing ever. Like he had a story to tell as a result of, of what he had done. So all of those, all of those things pop out of this to me, you know, because I've just kind of like, I just spent so much time this, this passage, just, I love it. So I'm yeah. sure you got other stuff, Lisa, but that's oh, my, that's my take on the So good. No, that was so good. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, I love how, you know, Jesus, he was going to care for his disciples and he does. We, we see him usher them into a boat right after this. Mm -hmm. He knows that they're tired. Uh, but he can't not see the crowd. Right. And so once again, he's got his closest friends. He knows what they need, but he's going to see and care for everyone. Um, and, and I just love that. I love that his heart really just breaks for all people. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what we've been learning about over the last three weeks is how are we loving all people? Um, because that's what we're called. And we, we read it over and over and over again, that we don't get to pick and choose. It's all it's, it's whoever's in front of us in that moment. And in this moment, there was a crowd of thousands that was in front of Jesus. And he had to stop. Once again, we, we've seen him do this several times where he stops the plan to care for the one who need him, needs him, whether it's one or thousands. Mm -hmm. Um, and when, when, when the disciples bring him the five loaves and the two fishes, I wonder if they're like, this is what we've got. Right. What are you going to do with this? Right. You know, in, in the, in, I think it's in the John passage. It, uh, it says Andrew, like he came up and says, what is this among so many? Yeah. Like, the, like I'm no mathematician here, but not everyone's not even going to get a bite. You right. Know? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So good. My dad, I can't remember where he was. He was somewhere. And the claim of the restaurant was that they served the fish that Jesus had served the 5,000. Oh. And my dad took a bite of it. And he was like, I can see why two fish would feed 5,000 people. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> people smelled it and were like, no. That's yeah. funny. Um, but one of the things that that I love about this um, is that Jesus depends on on God to multiply everything. So he takes it in his hands and he blesses it, but he he holds it up to heaven and he's like, mm. Hey, hey, God, this is all we've got. You're gonna, you're gonna have to do something here. Yeah. And of course, God provides um, just like he provided in the desert for the Israelites when they were wandering um, after they had left Egypt. And so mm. if you've not read that, it's in uh, in Exodus, but um God provides food for the Israelites every single day for 40 years. Um, and, and so again, we're seeing God miraculously provide in a desert place um, where, where there wouldn't have been. I mean, even if they had sent everyone out, there's no way the countryside could have provided enough food for all of these people. And Jesus knew that. And he knew that if he didn't do something, these people were really, really going to be in a bad place. And the other thing is, is that before Jesus does anything, he knows that he has to provide for our most basic needs. Mm -hmm. So he had taught, he probably had taught um, his greatest hits, like Phil says, you know, the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. That's probably the message that he was teaching them in this moment. But he knew that if he left them hungry, none of what he had just said would have mattered yep. that all of that would have been forgotten because they would have been so focused on their physical need for food. Mm -hmm. And so he provides even for that need um, by showing this compassion and this kindness. So, mm, so good. I love, I love to what you said there, Lisa, with Jesus kind of, he asked God to kind of perform the miracle. And I think as a wrap up kind of to the week, talking about accepting others, talking about, you know, justice, talking about like social justice, making sure people have what they need, all of those things. We can get caught up 
in that, that that's mm -hmm. what we're a part of that, you know, like social gospel, this is what Jesus calls us to. This is the only thing Jesus calls us to. Well, it's not the only thing Jesus calls us to. There's, there's so much more. And if we go into that as ourselves, if we go into that thinking that we can make a difference that we can do, that we can be a part of, I mean, we, we, we confuse ourselves in that it, it comes through God. It comes through our relationship with him. It comes through his power that works through us. Um, the boy's lunch was only the boy's lunch until Jesus got a hold of it. And so we, you know, the boy didn't bring his lunch and feed right. everybody. Jesus did. And it was that, I think we just need, we just need to not lose focus on that because some people can get way off base with like, as long as I'm doing what Jesus, you know, as long as I'm providing for people, as long as I'm feeding the poor, as long as I'm doing, like, that's what it means to follow Jesus. That's, that's part of what it means to follow Jesus. That's not the whole thing. And, it, and it's not you. It's what Jesus can do through you. So. Right. Anyway. Right. And uh, there are other places where it talks about be a living sacrifice. Yeah. Um, constantly be willing to let God use mm -hmm. you. We never know what God will multiply through us. Uh, because he he can do so much more abundantly more than what anything we could ever think or imagine. Sorry, my computer's right. about to die. So I know a couple. Oh. <laughs> Grabbing my charger. <laughs> Mine almost tried to restart last week, <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 wait, <laughs> this is right, not we're all good well. now. Um, okay, I'm going to jump back to a couple comments, and then we're going to get into the questions. Uh, if you want to start dropping in your answers to some of those questions, go ahead and do that. Uh, Chad, welcome. Um, Chad says, teaching and empowering for the purpose of solidifying the faith of his followers. Yeah. For sure. Jesus saw where they were, where the crowd was. He knew what they needed. And so he provides both the teaching and then the practical, uh, physical um, meeting of their hunger needs. Uh -huh. um, Jeanette says, it's like with Marketplace. You don't turn people away, and every week God provides in big ways. Speaking of marketplace, how'd it go? It, well, it went really, it went really well. And there's a great aside. I think Debbie's on here. She's she's gonna want me to say this. Um, we had we we've been kind of like more families, more meals, everything each and every week. And so last uh, this week we were planning for about 110. Uh, families and we only gave boxes to 92 families I think so okay. we're hoping like maybe that's a turn and there's not as much need you know that's mm -hmm. what that our desire is um, but it also means we have a bunch of stuff left over and so out in front of church this morning get there this morning there's produce boxes these are beautiful boxes of produce yes. um, vegetables fruit all that um, there's there's probably 10 to 15 of those and we have milk and we've got milk sitting on ice out in front of church. Um, 2% milk, whole milk, come and grab as much milk. We were giving away four gallons of milk to families. Debbie, one lady said she could freeze milk. Debbie gave yep. her 10 gallons of milk. I think we had 220 quarts and gallons of milk yesterday. So we have extra stuff. It's, it's going to go to waste. Go pick some up, um, grab it. We're trying to get it to anybody that we can. So if you need milk, yeah. go on some produce grab it from church this morning. But yeah, we did, we did 92 families. We did 240 meals. Um, and yeah, we're, we're kind of hoping, maybe we're hoping we see a swing. It was also payday this week. So sometimes we don't have as much, um, sure. as much need when they're, when people have had a payday. So we'll see. Um, and check with your neighbors too. Yeah. We checked with company. our neighbors. Anthony called on his way home and he's like, does anyone need milk? So we're just like texting all of our neighbors. Uh, so check with your people and see, but exactly. like you said, it, it's going to go bad if we don't get right. it away. Right. So, <laughs> and you perfect. can freeze milk. That is that is yeah. true. We do yep. that all the time. Um, Leslie here, she says, I think Jesus was teaching his disciples how to shepherd and provide for the multitude and not send people away. Hmm. And I think I think this is probably one of those moments that as the disciples went out after Jesus's death and resurrection. I think this is probably one of those moments they came back to frequently. Uh, we didn't read it, but there was actually leftovers from what was provided. And there were 12 basketfuls. And obviously there were 12 disciples and I'm sure each of them walked away with a basket. Like we were wrong. <laughs> right. It was a reminder. Yeah. 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 
Um, and I, I'm sure that reminder stuck with them for the remainder of their lives. Um, and I think there was one more. Yeah. Debbie uh, mentioned this when we were in that passage in Micah, when we're talking about walking humbly with God, she says, I think sometimes we also like to be proudful of our walk with God. Mm -hmm. And when we walk in pride like that, mm -hmm. I don't think people are seeing Jesus through us. And it's very difficult to accept others uh, when we're walking with pride. Uh, Greg said as an opportunity to help out your neighbors, they can always use food. Uh, I looked in the produce boxes yesterday. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Yep. Mm. Or as Debbie would say, produce. Produce, yep. <laughs> Um, okay. And then Dom says the difference between a coward and a courageous person is one step forward. Mm. So good. All right. Well, we're going to jump into, uh, those questions now. So let me get our document down here. Crystal, uh, our executive producer has already started pulling things in there. So, um, because I'm not quite as eloquent, I just start at the bottom and move my way up. <laughs> Kendall, if you see things that I'm missing, will you yep. just shout those out. Yep. Okay. So Dom starts here with uh, question number three, which is what prevents us from being kind and compassionate. Uh, once again, fear is an issue. And this has been a dominant theme throughout. So I wonder if that's the reason that over and over and over again in scriptures, we read, do not fear, mm. Uh, mm. do not be afraid. Uh, but fear is an issue. We have to become vulnerable to do this. And that means that there is the possibility of rejection. That's stressful for many. My friend Mike always reminded me that God calls us to ask and he deals with the rest. Oh, That's good. Yeah. Um, and then Dom on question two, what do these verses give us and how God expects us to show kindness and compassion to others? I believe we need to take a step out and take hold of what God has placed before us. I believe that the expectation is that we use what we've been given for the benefit of others, however small or large the opportunity is. And I think that's such a great reminder. Some people think I don't have enough to make a difference. Um, and and there's, a, there's a part where Jesus actually sees an older woman and she just has not a lot of money, but her, her heart uh, is so tender and pure behind why she's giving it because she knows that God can do more with it than what she could do with it. And she's trusting God uh, with everything that she had. That was everything that she had. And then we see someone who is very wealthy give just a fraction of what they had. And Jesus is saying, man, like her little contribution can do big things. Um, so I, I just think that's such a good reminder, little or big. It really is. What does God, what, what can God do with what you have? Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's see. Okay, question number five. Um, when we fail to show kindness and compassion to others, what does it reveal about our relationship with God? Uh, do we really know God? Is he our Lord and Savior? Uh, or are we like the Sadducees and the Pharisees? If Christ lives in us and we are yielded to him, we cannot help but somehow show kindness and compassion to others. Um, all right. And then Eileen adds on to that. I just read the context around the Zechariah passage, and it struck me that the people came to Zechariah to seek the favor of God. But after Zechariah tells them to stop being self-serving and focus on serving others, it says the people refuse to hear and harden their hearts. Mm -hmm. It is a good reminder to search my heart and ask, am I seeking God to tell me what I want to hear? And if not, will I harden my heart? Or am I willing to hear whatever he has to tell me and obey? I've struggled through this recently. I think a lot of us have. Same. Yeah, right. Yeah. Man. Um, let's see. Okay. And then Sarah answered uh, question number one. What are the differences between how our culture defines kindness and compassion and what we've read? Uh, I am not sure that most people would want, would not want to be waited on and fed and have a me first mentality. Jesus, on the other hand, in Mark did not even stop to eat or rest until, uh, until and unless his disciples basically forced him. 
uh, to do so. And even with the woman in Samaria where he was supposed to be resting, he kept spreading his love to this one woman and the whole town was saved. Would our politicians even consider doing this? Would we? Ooh, zing, I would, zing at the end. Yeah. Zing at the end. <laughs> yeah. But, but I would say uh, it, it's easy to push push that responsibility on others, but am I willing to do this? Mm -hmm. Right. Am right. I willing to put others' needs before my own? Am I willing to uh, sacrifice my comfort and my time for someone else? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the answer is no. Right. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, and, and if you missed, we, Dustin and I last night in the online class, we talked about the woman at the, at the well in Samaria. So uh, context around that. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, Cassie says, this culture says people are mean, be mean back or be nice to their face and talk badly about them behind their backs. Um, but the Lord says, be kind to everyone and do not scheme against each other. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's good. It's true. Um, let's see. All right. I'm going to hop back down and see where we are. Um, Cassie uh, on number five says, what in the world am I doing with my life? Am I living a daily sacrifice or am I letting my own self get in the way? Which shoulder am I feeding? So uh, Cassie and I had a conversation where it was like the selfish uh, voice on this side and then the selfless voice mm -hmm. on this side. So which, so she started saying, which shoulder am I feeding? Mm -hmm. um, am I allowing Jesus to work through me daily or am I closing myself off? What can I do better? Where to start? Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Um, and then also question number five, Dom says it reveals that we're out of sync with God and have allowed the world to creep and distort what we value. Uh, the world will always push us back into a me first mode. God will always push us into loving one another mode. If you listen. Right, <laughs> you right. Listen let, yeah. Uh, and then question number four, the key here is our heart. Do we have a consumption mentality or a generosity mentality? If the latter, then we make the assumption that if it comes to me, it may not be for me. When we make that assumption, then we can give sacrificially with joy. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. And you know, the interesting thing when we, when we look at this little boy, um, I said it too, when we look mm. at this boy, uh, oh. there's nothing in here that, that he was like trying to hide it and the disciples saw it. Right. I mean, I, I have to believe that he was like, Hey, I've got this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to do anything, but this is what I've got. Right. Um, he wasn't, you know, kind of like you were saying earlier, he wasn't um, hoarding that for himself. He was trusting that maybe mm. it could be part of something bigger. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and then Carol, I think this is probably what prevents us from um, being kind and compassionate. Fear permeates our lives in one form or another. It is the excuse we use as to why we don't do many things that matter. Mm. That's good. That's good. All right, Kendall, any last thoughts on any of this? Did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. It's it's been a challenging week. There's there's so much when it when it comes to accepting one another and you know the idea of not just accepting but going out of our way to show kindness, to show uh, to to show care, to be humble. Uh, all of those things are yeah. It's just it, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's a great yeah, reminder I, this week. I think it's just we'll close on this idea that none of this is just going to happen. It, right. it is not our natural instinct to do any of these one another's. And so if mm -hmm. you're just like, Hey, maybe it'll happen if I just kind of sit back and, and wait for it. It's not, uh, we have to take active steps to, to ensure that this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to pray, close us out and we're going to get on with our weekend here. Sounds good. All right. Um, God, thank you so much for this week. Thank you for Kendall and his willingness to step into these difficult conversations with us and challenge us and encourage us and uh, help us to better understand what it looks like to be accepting, to show kindness, to uh, walk in humility, um, to show care for other people. God, I pray that you would uh, bless him, bless his family uh, as they are um, going to be spending time together this weekend. And God, we just continue to pray for our community. Uh, man, 
if things are turning around financially for folks, that would be such an answer to prayer. Uh, we, we thank you that we have had the opportunity to meet needs and come alongside people right where they are um, in those needs. And God, we just pray that we would not uh, even need to do that anymore, that you would make a way where, um, where there is just not that kind of need in our community. Uh, God, we pray that you would continue to guide us as a church, that you would lead us, um, and God, that we would be in turn leading others uh, with kindness and compassion, that we'd be accepting and loving, uh, and God, that we would be a church that serves. We pray that you would be with our uh, whole country and our, our world with give wisdom and discernment to our leaders, uh, give wisdom to those who are looking for cures and working on vaccines. Um, God, this has just been wreaking havoc for many, many months now, and it doesn't feel like there's an end in sight, but I pray that we would trust you in all of this. And God, we specifically uh, pray for Greg as he is heading back to California. Uh, God, we just continue to pray for Pete that you would meet him right where he is and that you would use Greg as a means to help Pete see you, to see uh, who you are. And God, that his assumptions about you would, just those walls would be broken down and that he would feel and experience your love and mercy and kindness in a completely different and new way. Uh, be with Greg and, and give him um, safety as he's traveling. And God, just protect us all as we go through our weekend. We love you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All Amen. right. Well, Friday, yep. uh, we'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Uh, Phil will be back driving yep. this whole ship. So maybe it'll be a little more seamless. But we really appreciate you all and hope you all have a great week. Thank End. you. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you, Phil. This is a blessing to so many people each and every morning. And thanks for allowing me to be a part of it this week. It's yep. great. See ya. Have a good one.